Hello, and welcome to the interview series for the Nonfiction Authors Association. Today's session is with Marika McCandless, and we'll be talking about cultivating right now mind. That's W-R-I-T-E, now mind, using free writing techniques to improve everything about your nonfiction writing. I'm Carla King, your host, and I'm happy to have you with us today. We'll be with you for up to 30 minutes, and recordings of this are available on our nonfictionauthorsassociation.com website, or you can just plug it into social media and it'll pop right up. If you're new to us, our members receive our author advisor email every Friday featuring curated media leads and links to exclusive member content. Members also participate in a very popular free mastermind group we call the Author Brainstorm Exchange. And also, if you're on Facebook, you have access to our vibrant, vibrant private community. Discounts are available for our year-round nonfiction book awards program, our annual nonfiction writers conference, and intensive six-week master courses on everything about publishing, publishing, marketing, promotion, and all of those uh, have and all of those have optional professional certification available if you like. We can't forget discounts with our awesome partners. They include Lulu, Find Away Voices, Office Depot, Ingram Spark, and there are others too. But finally, we'd love for you to join us at nonfictionauthorsassociation.com. And now I'd like to introduce our guest. Marika McCandless is an award-winning author, essayist, and blogger, and a longtime awareness practitioner. Her recipe for enlivenment is listen, play, write. She leads a popular online writing practice called Right Now Mind and awareness practice sessions called Juicy Practices for Getting Present, plus other immersion experiences in meditation and enlivenment. You can find her at marikamccandless.com. That is M-A-R-I-J-K-E, mccandless.com. Hi, Marika. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, Carla. So good to be here. Yeah, I bet you always have to spell your name, don't you? (laughs) Always, always. Always, always. (laughs) I'm so glad to have you with us because, you know, free writing is so much fun and it can be very um, uh, freeing. How long have you been doing this? When did you discover this productivity practice? I mean, I learned it over 25 years ago. I I don't know how many of your readers are familiar with Natalie Goldberg, but Natalie Goldberg, she's sort of the free writing pioneer. And her book, Writing Down the Bones, really enlivened in me a different way to write, a flow style of writing. Um, You know, at the time I was in corporate settings, I had a freelance paralegal business, I was very logical and discursive in my writing. And this was something else altogether really taught me who I was as a writer. You know, I remember picking up that book. And even when I was traveling and writing, I had this tiny little pocket book of it's very thick. And I used to use it all the time, but I dropped it. So I'm really glad you're on because I think I'm going to start doing that um, again. And I've tried it in in the recent past, but I have a hard time just getting in the mindset. So do you have any tips or tricks about how to get in that mindset? Is there a place, a time, are there any rules about it? Um, I think that's a really interesting question because... In a way, what you have to do is let go of the concept of mindset and instead replace it with um, just a simple decision to make a commitment. And the commitment should be very modest, like 10 minutes a week. I'm simply going to try to do this 10 minutes a week. Monday at eight o'clock, I'm going to free write for 10 minutes. And it's a little bit different from um, morning pages like Julia Cameron's The Artist's Way. A lot of people do morning pages. Fantastic practice, by the way. This is a little different because you use a very simple prompt, two words, and it usually like I feel or I notice or I want. Um, and those two little words are enough to drive 
different things to to come to bubble up from you. But I talk a little bit more at the, about that at the end because there's a way you can come up with your own prompt too. But well, this morning, my words would be, I want to make my plumbing problems go away. <laughs> Does that work? I mean, what do you do? Totally. Stuff going uh, on. Totally. That's kind of the beauty of free writing. Is it, it, um, what I like to think of as free writing is it, it reveals your inner leanings. So typically whatever you have burning questions about will come out in your free writing because there's no editor. There's no thinking about what you're going to write. There's the, there are rules. So the rules are set a timer. When you're doing it on your own, I would actually set it for three to five minutes to start. Um, when we do it in a group, we set a timer for 10, we, we individually each set a timer for 10 minutes. But the rules are keep your hand moving, be specific, so not I feel frustrated, but sweat is pouring down my head. I've got, you know, <laughs> armpit stains from dealing with this, whatever, you know, um, lose control. So, and don't think, and what happens and the main one is really just keep your hand moving and what it's going to require of you when you start is to go ahead and write out the inner critic that's going to come in probably right away, you're going to say, whatever, I want my plumbing crisis to be over and 30 seconds is going to be up and you're going to have nothing more to say about it. So then you say, I have nothing more to say. I don't know what to write because I'm done thinking about that. And you just keep writing all those things out and inevitably there will be a natural pause and you'll say something like, wonder how my mom's doing today whatever other sort of either an inner leaning or a universal challenge that that's personal for you right then might come up so you know something often what comes up in free writing is things about relationships or career decisions or experiencing loss um yeah yeah. And, you know, you said what, three to five minutes, uh, if you're doing it on your own and maybe 10, if you're doing it with a group, I mean, um, you know, can you really get any useful writing done here? I, this might just be something that you don't want to do actually. Um, is it a good warm up? I mean, what, what it's, happens? Do you think themes emerge or? Yeah, totally. Um, to, when when I host a workshop and we do it as a group, we usually start with three minutes. Really, we ju you just write for three minutes. And I suggest three minutes because it's really hard to say to yourself, I don't have three minutes available. I certainly, I have three minutes available. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> when I do it um, through my online right now mind the instruction is to write for 10 minutes it's a it's harder it's much harder almost always people will run out of things to say and that's where it gets interesting that's where we push through what we think we want to say what where our control is to the taboo subject we don't want to talk about or whatever so um i i can't tell you how it's so even a practice that's 10 minutes a week, I have hundreds of people who have written me saying, this has changed my life. This has changed my ability to write. Um, if you're a discursive writer, it's not quite as directly a productivity tool. You're not going to do your free writing and come out with the perfect paragraph to insert in your legal brief or whatever, you know, or your how to book. But what it's teaching you is what your voice sounds like when it's flowing, when it's not interrupted by the inner critic. And it teaches you what you naturally want to talk about. So for many, many years, I thought the first book that I wanted to write was going to be about um, coaching 
being a paralegal for um, personal and for a a family in family law, coaching people through divorce or whatever. And I, I had a beautiful title for the book and everything. And the words simply, they weren't flowing. I, I was adequate at doing it. Turns out that's not really what I wanted to write about. I wanted to write about my own personal struggle that came out later, but Yes, it will absolutely improve your writing. I have no question about it. It's not direct. I'll say it one other way. It's like if you're a professional rock climber and you go jogging, you know, three or four times a week. You do it because it's endurance and it's practice. It's physical fitness practice. Free riding practices like that. It's um, non-judgmental writing flow. And it really helps. That's so helpful because I I mean, our inner critic is always there, maybe especially for what you call discursive uh, writing projects or uh, prescriptive nonfiction, which are how to books and um, professional books, as opposed to creative nonfiction, um, memoirs and essays. Um, yeah. And I know we just came off a writing, uh, critique group. Uh, it was a two month long one. And I did notice that it seemed like the first paragraphs, um, of, of a lot, many of the writers works, whether they were chapters or essays were very stilted. Um, you could see the inner critic, you know, editing them to feel, to, to sound like, a professional, you know, expert. They really wanted to come off as an expert. Yeah. But when they got down to it, like paragraph three or four, you did start seeing a, a voice start happening. So I almost feel like that it wasn't a free writing exercise, but it was a warm up. How does that differ? How do those two things differ? Well, in a way, I think it's a little bit similar. It would be like, um, what you notice was that people were a little stilted when they started their voices, their inner critic was telling them, okay, you need to do a good job, sound like an expert, choose the right words, you know, and as they, as they just got into the writing flow, maybe it came out a little more naturally. So if you wanted to practice just being in a writing flow, um, then you do free writing because there's, you, there's no rules. All you're doing is writing. It, I like to say it befriends the writer inside. Free writing befriends yourself. And to really deliver a message, you need to be comfortable in your own skin. You need to not be worrying about if you sound like an expert, but rather just sharing what you know. And um, it just greases the wheels. I love that. Sharing what you know, which is what we're doing, whether we're writing memoir or prescriptive nonfiction. Um, And uh, we've we've been writing these things possibly because we've been asked about them, about this topic, (laughs) whether it's our life or whether it's, you know, how to get a divorce and do all the legal stuff, what you were saying. Um, So I'd like to talk about themes because when I write I think of a theme, I think about exactly what I want to um, express or explore. Is that, is that shooting myself in the foot? Is that at all helpful? Or should I just, you know, put all the themes out of my mind and see what emerges? I mean, I, I, I think it's nice to contemplate what themes you want to write about, where you know your expertise is. That's very natural for writing an essay. Um, But it's interesting to see what burning questions kind of naturally come out. And those will come out when you free write. So for instance, um, perhaps, okay, so I was really good at writing about paralegaling. But what my, my inner burning question was, which, but when I wrote about it, there wasn't a lot of juice. You know, there was competence, which is great, but I wanted to reach, I I don't know, but when I um, thought about what's my inner burning question, which is something more like, 
who am I or what am I? You know, almost more kind of spiritual question or something like that. That's um, a great prompt. Who am I? Who am I? <laughs> Answer yeah. this question. That would stump me for a while. I don't know <laughs> yeah. if I could keep my pen moving on that. I, I do that one sometimes as a prompt. It is a really great prompt. Oh, great. Awesome. It's probably the very first prompt I ever did. And it's fascinating to watch it change because usually we identify who we are first as our roles. And it becomes, you know, I'm a mother, I'm a whatever, I'm a paralegal. Da, da, da. Um, but um, what I saw was that I was interested in something more essential to the spirit, I guess. So um, in other words, do I have to figure out what I'm going to say before I say it? Or can I see what comes out? And it for me, it became a more interesting process. Well, I mean, I had to do both, but to see what wanted to come forth. So for instance, in the last Right Now Mind class, everybody has the same prompt. And it, let's say the prompt is, I forgive. Um, so one person might take that and spend the whole time forgiving themselves. Another person might revisit a moment with their mom when something went awry and they weren't sure, you know. Another person might, um, you know, think about the whole concept of forgiveness on the world scene. Um, so it, it seems, so it's interesting what's going on inside you, what that you haven't maybe given voice to. And um, as far as how that translates, again, it comes down to, oh, this is really a big theme in my life, relationship with my mom or world politics or my relationship, my self-care rituals or whatever, yeah. but also how I describe it. Um, even prescriptive books, the authors have a voice. You know, right. are they formal? Are they friendly? Is there, you know, and you need to be in touch with that when you, even when you write that kind of book, what's your voice? And that will come out in free writing. Are you a lyrical writer? Are you staccato? You know, you write or, and there's all kinds of rules about how writing should be. Oh, you should have some long sentences and some short sentences and, you know, some lyrical ones and some, you know, to the point ones. But what happens if you just don't, if you let all the rules go and you just see what your natural voice sounds like? That's yeah, it's almost part. like having a conversation with a trusted friend. And yeah. uh, sometimes we are our own worst enemies, right? All that judging comes out. Yes, absolutely. Right. That comes out in free writing a lot too. And invariably, people start by whatever, blaming themselves for something or feeling bad about something. But then by the end of 10 minutes, they're kind of like, actually, I'm not that bad. You know, <laughs> they, they come back to self-care and that's awesome. I mean, when we're talking about nonfiction, we're often talking, you know, trying to be the big expert. And um, it's hard to say, I don't know when people are asking you, um, you know, for advice, but I don't know is sometimes the best answer. And I don't know how I got on that, but I just kind of feel like um, maybe free writing would help me with that, you know, that I don't know and explore. I love that the term essay means, you know, to try in uh, French, right? Beautiful. Um, that, I know, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. We use it as a verb, you know, I'll, I'll essay, uh, you know, a, a, a play, you know, I'll essay a, a game of poker, right? Uh, I yeah. love that term. And I always try to think of that when I'm writing instead of, okay, I'll try instead of I'll direct or I'll, I'll, you know, explain it all. Exactly. Um, that yeah. Was and I wanted to ask also about technique. Yeah. You were saying the writing flow, you know, and are you talking about a pen or a, do you, can we use a computer? I are use a, com I use a computer now. I used to always do longhand and I used to swear that longhand was the only way to do it because I felt sort of like, oh no, this is totally part of it. But 
I don't know. I just don't feel that way anymore. I think, I think both are fine. You can tr- start with one and see if it feels better. And I just do it on the computer. I don't think it matters. It doesn't matter anymore mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. me anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, do you ever use the Pomodoro method? What, What's uh, that? I, I'm not familiar. The Pomodoro with that. method is that little, uh, it's a, like it's a little tomato timer. I think it's 20 minutes. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. I always set a timer. Always. Yeah. You don't always. ever do it without. It's like, yeah, you don't ever do it. The so first, you make yourself sit in the chair and write and, totally. you know, for three to five minutes or 10 minutes. Totally. Totally. Mm-hmm. And it's, um, it's powerful if you have someone else give you the prompt because you, all you have to decide is when you're sitting down. So there, there's two ways of doing this. If someone else is providing you with a prompt, you say, okay, I, I'm my 10 minutes or my three minutes or whatever the, the rule is, um, is right now you sit down, you set the timer, look at the prompt and then start writing. Otherwise the tendency is to look at the prompt and think about it for the whole next week. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. So yeah. when I was first doing free writing, I would ha- I was flying a lot. I was traveling for business a lot and I would use the exact same prompt every single time and the setting was boring. It was inside the interior of a plane, but I would use the prompt right now I notice. And then I would set the timer and I would write what I notice. And what is fascinating about doing that is a whole other um, benefit for free writing, because you need to, one of the things you're doing, one of the rules is be specific. So you have to start noticing more subtle things like not like, okay, I'm sitting in a plane and there's, you know, 10 heads in front of me and there's two blondes and a brown, but wow, look at how the air conditioning wisps that one hair around that woman's face. And she's so sweet with her child in her lap. And oh my gosh, I miss when I was a mom of a small child and, oh, remember that time when the child did da, 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 and you just let it go. You lose control, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. excuse me, but I only had the same setting and the same prompt. So you have to be very present to what is unfolding in this unique moment, even though our brain will tell us it's boring. (laughs) Let's do this. Let's Let's do this. Why don't we take three prompts right now and challenge our listeners to after this episode and sit down, keep, uh, unless you're driving, (laughs) (laughs) you know, uh, sit down in your seat and, and um, use one of these prompts to do a a three to five minutes. What do you think? I I love the idea. Yeah. I want to, I'd love feedback and I would use, The first prompt being right now, I notice dot, dot, dot. Um, That's a good one because they can't, you can't pre-plan it, (laughs) right? Um, I'd like to use the second one I think might be good is um, I feel. And I'd like to encourage people to um, go to physical feelings as well as emotional feelings. You may be drawn to go one place or another, but um, don't forget to include both. I feel, you know, my right foot is resting on a metal bar of this chair. It's getting a little bit sore, you know, (laughs) that kind of Mm -hmm. thing. Um, Mm -hmm. Also, I feel so excited inside to be here. I feel enlivened. I feel, happy to I be feel talking frustrated to because of my my plumbing issues <laughs> yeah. yeah carla we want you to right write now i notice my plumbing issues it's like yeah, <laughs> yes. i just need to get that out of my head you know sometimes it's head clearing right <laughs> absolutely absolutely okay, so that's what right now i notice dot 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 i feel what do you think for nonfiction writers what do you think let's the third say should for be? the third we could go one. With three to five it, it doesn't matter Three to five minutes or three to five prompts. No. Okay. Let's oh, do, we can stop um, with three. let's, I'm going to give them a, a dual one so they can choose either or both. And it's going to be, okay. I want, I don't want. 
dot 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 ah. okay so let's just write i want or i don't want or both you can write on both yeah excellent okay yeah i'm excited about this because as i say you know um I haven't really done it for a long time. Um, I do tend to sit, sit in my seat. I don't, I don't feel like I get writer's block anymore. Good. Um, yeah. Which is nice. But then again, I don't feel like I do enough of this exploratory writing, right? <laughs> I'm either working on my memoir or I'm working on my how-to book or my class classes handouts yeah. or something. Yeah. I want to make a comment also about nonfiction writers. Um, we're nonfiction writers because we love the truth. But we can be um, our own conditioning can color that truth. So another thing that free writing does is it releases authenticity. It releases, it allows us to I don't know, to not know everything, even while we're an expert in a field. And it, it, um, that is actually the truth. So <laughs> if you want to be a nonfiction writer, you have to play with your own messy, not knowing interior as well. Then authenticity comes through. Thank you. Yes. Right through until you get there. Oh my gosh. I can't believe we're almost out of time. Um, and I know you have a lot more to offer on your website. So if you could tell us your website and your programs and how to find you on socials and all that, I'd love to hear that. The easiest way is just to go to my website. So it's my first name and my last name.com. So it's M A R I J K E M C C a-N-D-L-E-S-S dot -S com. And all my social media links are on there. Scroll to the bottom. You can subscribe if you want. Um, and uh, there's a tab. Have some books, right? You have I, some I, books I, and I, essays and stories. That's true. I have, uh, there's a tab that says books. So that you can okay. just go to the tab and read about them. I wrote a book under a pseudonym, a memoir. So uh, that book is on there. Um, my new and upcoming book, I don't have a pub date yet, but it's called Naked in the Now, Juicy Practices for Getting Present. It will include writing practices for you writers out there. <laughs> oh, very um, good. Yeah. Very good. And yes. right now, and mine, on your... mm -hmm. go ahead. No, oh, I was just going to say right now, mind is a tab on my website. You can just mm -hmm. send me an email. Send me an email. I love to meet people. And I love your listen, play, write, and you have four bullets there. Befriend yourself, be kind to others, say yes to life, and cultivate right now mind. Yes. <laughs> and in both senses of the word. Well, thank you so much, Marika, for being our guest today. Thanks, Carla. I can't wait to write, hear all about your plumbing issues and how you felt. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write it out. Okay. okay. I might not publish it though. <laughs> no. And thank you It'll to our listeners for, for, for joining us today. And, um, you know, we conduct these interviews every single week. And so you can check the schedule or sign up for our mailing list to get notifications about events at nonfictionauthorsassociation.com. We have a free basic membership. So check it out and you can join it at any level whenever you like. Okay. Thanks again. And see you next time. Thank you so much.